Well, hey gang, I got this car stereo on the bench, Chrysler Corporation, got it at Goodwill for $2.99, I was hauling some stuff in, I've been getting rid of a lot of things lately, but I figured I'd go in the store see if they had anything interesting. As usual, they don't have anything audio anymore, just random junk. But I found this car stereo and a date code. Don't know their date codes. It looks 80 ish to me. It has this heat sink wrapped around the outside, so it's Probably a bridge amp configuration. Something rattling inside. These things usually don't work. I mean, the, the stuff with moving parts is usually shot. The radio and amplifiers, I would guess, would probably work. I don't know how to hook it up. There's no diagrams or anything. So I'm just going to open it up and have a squiz on the inside. Okay, we're in. It's very modular. Everything connects with ribbon. And uh, this is the front panel. That's where the fluorescent display driver chip is and the fluorescent display itself. Here's the cassette deck portion. I don't know if you can see that, the tape head. It's out of reverse, but it has its own, I don't know if I can get in there any better, but it's got its own tape heads for the other channel, so it doesn't mechanically flip around. It just reverses the uh, tape direction. Lots of little sensors and things there's the board Dolby chip that's the tape head amplifier for the separate heads that there's the shielded wire that goes to the board I'm guessing that's what that is seems to be made quite well here's the main board it's all Nichicon brown jacketed 105C capacitors. I think that's a microcontroller. I'm not even going to bother to look it up, but I'm guessing that's what that is. There's a crystal right next to it. This is where the uh, front panel plugs into. That's where the cassette plugs into. This is your entire radio circuit, it looks like. It's all surface mount. Through hole, one side surface mount, the other. Here is your power amplifier ICs, I'm pretty sure. And follow the traces, they go right to the pins. Each one has two channels, so each speaker has its own for, you know, left and right front and left and right rear. You don't see any capacitors except this main filter. Just a few surface mount components. In the late 80s and starting in the 90s, they minimized the part count. So, you know, the amplifiers needed very little components. But this here, I'm not sure what this is. I think it's a multi-output regulator. There's all these capacitors around it. You know, the power comes in here, goes through a trans or a choke. You know, here's where the power comes in. There's a large diode connected, um, reversed across the reverse bias across the. Um, power supply so if it's hooked up you know if somebody hooks a battery up backwards 
the diode will conduct and blow the fuse so you don't destroy the radio then it comes into these this choke and when I'm guessing some sort of power uh, regulator or you know might have some control pins I did notice the power amp gets its power right off this choke and it goes to that large capacitor and down to the power amps and there's probably a standby pin that shuts those down that way you know these get the full voltage so you can get maximum output this is probably some sort of audio control chip I don't know look it up if you want to know I'm ST Microelectronics. Well, I might fumble around with this and see if I can get these amplifiers going again. I'll have to get this bracket mounted. See if I can find a data sheet. The bracket compresses the chip against the heat sink. Get this one hooked back up. Maybe I can get this thing going and get a quick power measurement well those chip amps cross reference to a TDA 1553Q for some reason in these car stereos they uh, use a different numbering system I don't know why maybe to keep third parties from repairing them beats me but I called this one I said it was a multi output voltage regulator I mean, what else could it be over there? And that's the part number, and somebody's selling it on eBay. And that's what it is. I'll have to see if I can find a data sheet for it. I did find a data sheet for that, for the uh, power amps. And look at that. Very easy to use. Hardly any components. If you don't want the mute standby mode you just tie it all high and uh, yeah I might uh, take these chips out and use them for something so there you go that's what I have so far well, I hooked up some power in a speaker it's on the power supply over there just to see if it would work and the amplifier seemed to work okay but the radio is pretty weak I'm clipped on to the antenna and I check that out I have a couple feet of wire so you know when I do this with other car stereos it picks up all the stations pretty strongly but this one's pretty weak AM 1290 and news 95 7 WHIO The FM just scans and scans. Let's see, there's 106.5, nothing. 107.7 is pretty strong, nothing. So the radio seems to have issues. There's this ground strap, but even when I touch it, it you know it doesn't matter. But that's just an aside. I want to power test these chips. See what kind of power they put out. I know what it's going to be. It's it'll it'll be around you know somewhere between 12 and 14 watts of clean power, maybe. You know we've tested these types of chips before on the channel and uh, I expect to get the I expect to get about the same okay I'll inject a signal I need to find what the input pins are now, let's see here now we have pin 13 for one channel and pin 1 
for the other channel. Let's see, pin one. Let's see, where's the amp chips? Right here. So we're looking from the bottom. So this would be pin one. Then it zigzags pin one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. And this thing is DC coupled, so I have to uh, I'll have to set the camera down and I need to hook a capacitor up. If I can grab that wire there. Okay. So I just got a capacitor and I'll touch it to pin one. Let's see. nothing so maybe I'm hooked up to the other channel yep there we go so it looks like I can do a power test I hook that up to the 4 ohm non-inductive load put the scope across it and see if I can't inject that signal there. And we'll see what happens. Okay, I have some precarious connections going on here. Supply voltage. I did move over. Before I was so rudely interrupted, I said I, was, I had to move over to this power supply because it has enough power to drive the high current output where this one does not and it's running at 14.9 volts and I have the function generator the little capacitor there to block the DC and okay we'll turn that on of course the forum load I'm just doing one channel driven I'm not doing both channels and all that. It's just too difficult to hook all this stuff up. And there is a distortion peak even though it's not clipping yet. That's because of this thing. It it has uh, quite a bit of distortion so I'm just uh, well matter of fact let me just get rid of that. And we'll see when it clips by the when it flat tops. I'll just tune that out. 4.2. That can't be right. I'm scoping right across the load. Because, you know, 4 squared is 16 divided by 4 ohms. That's only 4 watts. So we're a little over 4 watts. It's got to be higher than that. See the problem with these bridge amps? If, if I connect a driven output... You know, it's supposed to be connected here, but if I connect the driven output to this amp or this amp, this amp's just sitting idle at half the supply voltage. So it's going to act like a, uh, you know, just a single output push-pull type configuration, not bridged. So I think I have my connection wrong. I'll have to see if I can fix that. So stand by. That's more like it. I just touched all the pins until I got to the one where the uh, output swing really went higher. So let me drop that down. And we're clipping, so let me bring that to the point just before clipping. That should do it. 7.35 volts. That is more like it. Okay. Let me punch that up. Seven point. Whoops. Seven point three five. I'm kind of balanced on the back of this chair here. And divided by four. Thirteen point five watts. Not too shabby. That's with a power supply voltage of fourteen point three four under load. So those are nice little chips. I think I'll desolder them from the radio there and I'll use them in another project. Okay, got them out. This little chip carrier thing they sat in made it a little more difficult to get out. 
but they are extracted. So now I can make myself a little easy bake stereo chip amp with one of these. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.